I'm going to join your world right now by remembering where I am and what, what I'm doing. What I'm doing is talking about one of the greatest things that God allows us to do, and that is to aim young lives in a direction with the guidance of a parent that says, I love the Lord, I love his word, I want to see my children uh, reflect that in the next generation. One of the greatest things we get a chance to do, and if God has blessed you to be a parent, uh, you know what that's about. And you know also that it's good to do that within the community of the redeemed, to have people in your church that are not only praying for you, but assisting you by being a part of it. Even our giving every single week allows us to do things like put a playground here and a coffee shop here and have our Sunday school classrooms for our kids. All of that helps us as we uh, assist parents in raising their children in the instruction of God's word. And so we always are excited to, to present in our services throughout the year, uh, families that are saying, hey, would you pray for us? And that's a good thing. We should be praying for one another, supporting one another. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 1 it, that, that the church helped him by their prayers. And uh, that's a real kind of help, as James says. Uh, it's effectual praying, and we want you to pray. And the commitment and the kind of arrangement that we have is that you'll promise when you see names up here, we have three families coming up, uh, to write down their names and at least promise to pray for seven days. That's if you don't know them. If you know them, of course, I want you to pray often and, and continually uh, throughout you know, the rest of, of these kids' childhood for this particular thing. But if you don't know them, uh, I would suggest you type it into your phone, you put a reminder every day, at least for the next seven days, and uh, I, I invite you to be an overachiever. You might do it for 14 or 30. Whatever you're going to do, I at least want you to pray for seven days for these people. They come to say, would you pray for me? It's not just about showing off your kids. It's about saying pray in the task, the very important task of parenting. And as you know, in our world, uh, and the Bible says it's going to go from bad to worse in 2 Timothy, and so we know we need the help all the more, and we need to gather together all the more as the timeline moves forward. So prayer is needed more than ever to support parents, young, young people, as they raise uh, this next generation of people. I want to raise them in the instruction and admonition of the Lord, as it says in Ephesians. So please, would you first pull out your pen or your phone or whatever you've got to remind yourself to pray for Jennifer. She's going to bring up her son, John, right now. Come on out, Jennifer. Some of you know Jennifer, don't you? I know you're a popular person around here. Introduce your son to us. So this is John. We call him Johnny. You say hi, Johnny. There he is. <laughs> yes, tell us, tell us something interesting about little Johnny. So Johnny actually has this Mickey hat that we cannot leave the house without. Mm -hmm. um, he wears it religiously for three years now. Um, I'm a little nervous because we're outgrowing it. Well. <laughs> it used to have ears that stood up. As you can see, it's well loved. Well, when he's dating um, <laughs> down the road, he'll have to be dating a Disney fan, apparently. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's all right. Uh, we know those kinds of things are... Uh, they're uh, cute and endearing, and you'll look back on it when you show him pictures of it and say, oh, mom, stop. Absolutely. <laughs> Very good. Now, we know um, John's, past, John's dad passed away yes. years back, yes. and you've been in this task by yourself. Yes. And I love the fact that the scripture is so clear about God himself being a father to the fatherless. Uh, but we want to just be reminded as a church that all the more we want to lean in to assisting you by our prayers, and by whatever help you might need. We're here for you, and we're going to pray for your future. But we want to ask you, as you stand before your church family, if you are committed uh, to raising Johnny according to the instruction and admonition of God's Word. Absolutely. Okay, well, we want to pray to that end right now. So let's pray together. God, we are so thankful for the gift of life, being able to see young lives that we can affect and train and teach and disciple and we know, God, the challenge, and there's many challenges in this fallen world, but uh, to do this uh, for these years that Jennifer has on her own, you giving her grace and drawing her to this church and having the friends that she has, that I know she has in this church, that are there for her. And I know it just makes this uh, a challenge that, God, you want to meet through us. We are your hands and your feet, 
And we pray this church would do that. And first and foremost, by being reliant on prayer as we intercede for Jennifer and all of her needs. Thank you so much for her uh, young and healthy son and just for the joy that I'm sure at times uh, she just reflects on, leans back and thinks about what a gift it is to have uh, uh, this young life in her home. And I pray that you would bless her and encourage her. Give her the perseverance and the tenacity just to keep doing what she's doing and doing it uh, for the glory of your name, knowing that these kids become such important people in the next generation who have had a good foundation being raised in the church with knowledge that puts them far ahead of those who come to Christ in the middle of their life. So we pray that John would come to faith in Christ, that he would grow up to be a follower of Christ, that you would draw him to yourself. You put his uh, heart in a place where he sees his sin and his need for you and that you bring him into a place of real productivity and fruitfulness, whatever you call him to do, whatever career, whatever industry, whatever business, or maybe even in ministry, however you use his life, let him be salt and light and an ambassador for your son. Uh, and just give his mother great joy in the process, we pray. Uh, meet her every need in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. You do know how important the community is uh, for parents, right? Hi, how are you? What's your name? Mm. Give, give us a minute. Mm. How are you, baby? Here's my Johnny right here. Johnny, who you got up yes. here with you? My name is Pastor Johnny. Uh, <laughs> This is my wife, Alexandra, our first, Eden, our second, Jordan, and our third, Ruth. There you go. Little Ruth. Hello, Ruth. She's awake. That's right. Named after my assistant of 20 years. <laughs> no, I, I don't know if that was the idea. But that is a name you didn't hear a lot of for a lot of decades. So tell us um, how you arrived at that. Well, we, we loved Ruth, the character in the Bible. We loved how... She was loyal to God. She chose God above all the other gods. She chose to be loyal to God's people. And what we want for Ruth more than anything is that she would be loyal like that, that she'd mm. love the people in her life and that she'd love God loyally too. That's right. And uh, not only is it hard raising a son on your own, and we pray for her in that regard, but uh, you need to know how hard it is to raise kids as a pastor. And... Uh, Pastor John is on a track to uh, be a senior leader in a church, wherever that is, and uh, we just know that uh, you need to double down on your praying for raising kids in the context of ministry. I I'm sure you've heard the stories of, uh, you know, the typical pastor's kids that go crazy. Um, well, you need to pray that doesn't happen here. Uh, that's what I pray doesn't happen here, that Ruth, you aren't just a mess. <laughs> You can't have that happen. Don't, don't do that. Nope. No. No. And good parenting, we know, is essential for the ministry. Matter of fact, if, if Pastor John and Alexandra don't manage their household well, they're not even qualified to do the work of pastoral ministry. So pray, pray, pray. Many lives, a lot of spiritual growth, a lot of fruitfulness in the kingdom depends on the task that we're praying for right now. So we're grateful for what God has done in uh, John's life, Alexandra's life. Uh, he picked the best girl in the church to marry right here. That's right. And I told the story at your wedding that I saw her at, um, do you want right, to right. tell that again? We're good. Let's pray. I Let's saw pray. her pray. before they were dating. And I said to Carlin, that's the kind of girl I hope my son marries one day. So meant to be, meant to be, meant to be. Yep. that's right. <laughs> Little did I know you'd be holding a girl named Ruth, though. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And this little girl, you split your lip today, didn't you? How did you do that? Her lip is bleeding. Do you see that? What happened to you, baby? You fell like that? Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. And what time did she do that today? Like two hours ago. Two hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Good timing. Yes, well, it's okay. She's doing great, yeah. as I knew she would. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> all right. Well, we could spend all day up here, but uh, we better get to praying. Uh, so I'll just ask you one more time. We've asked you twice, but you uh, 
Commit yourself to raising your kids according to the instruction and admonition of God's word. We do. We do. You had better. <laughs> All right. Let's pray. God, we are so thankful for the gift of children, and we're so grateful, God, as uh, John said uh, in Scripture, uh, no greater joy than to see our children walking in the truth. We're thankful, God, for the generation here raising the, the next generation. We just pray that there would be great success as your Spirit guides them and grants uh, these three children uh, a real, genuine, vibrant faith in your Son, and that you might use their minds and their lives and their influence to advance the cause of the kingdom in their generation. So God, be good to them. Uh, all the twists and turns of life and pastoral ministry, just pray you'd guide them through it all, that this uh, family would be blessed, that your blessing would rest on them and protection would rest on them. Be good to them, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray for a week now at least. Oh, you want her back too? Okay. Well, she can stay. She can stay. Bye-bye. All right. We won't get as mushy with you guys, but uh, I couldn't help it. All right. Jonah, introduce your family to us. Well, my name is Jonah, and this is my beautiful wife, Megan, and then our daughter, Georgiani. Gigi, though, Gigi. you call her, right? Yes. Yeah, we call her Gigi. Hello, Gigi. How are you? You doing okay? Kind of scary up here, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's... Look at your shoes. They look fantastic. <laughs> look at my shoes. What do you think of those? They're the same color. Yeah? Okay. Yep. She's into shoes. Yeah, I guess so. Typical. Yeah. <laughs> I get that. Is she a girly girl? Oh, yes. Yeah? She is? Okay. Well, that's good. That's fun. Well, we know you guys are plugged in here at the church, and uh, God is using you, and we know that you influence people for good, but this life right here is priority one, right? You know that. This is a task that uh, God has given us. I think in Deuteronomy 6 that says your conscious, purposeful discussion of theology in your home, right? And the truth of God's word, that's what God calls us to. And uh, whether it's reading books at night about scripture or whether it's talking about Bible verses at dinner or whatever, we just pray that your home would be saturated with that because that is so critical we know you both love God and love his word, and I pray that uh, Gigi would do the same. As you stand before your church family who's committing to pray for you at least for a week and many for much more than that, I just want to ask you if you're committed to raising her according to the instruction and admonition of the Lord. Yes, we are. We figured you were, but we want to, we want to solemnize that with the question publicly. Well, let's pray for you and uh, just pray for a great season of parenting. Let's pray. God, we are grateful for your kindness to us as Christians to have your word that's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And we struggle every day, every week to try and walk in step with your spirit and to know your word well enough to know how to make decisions at work and in our families and our homes and our budgets and whatever it might be that comes up in our lives. But then to think about uh, taking that light of your word and shining it brightly enough and clearly enough and comprehensively enough for young people to understand what the next steps they ought to take as they entertain thoughts in their minds and make decisions that uh, no one else can see in the depths of their own thinking. God, I pray that uh, mom and dad in this family would be so good at explaining, not just reciting, but explaining your truth, uh, making it understandable to Gigi that she might learn to love your word. I've seen so many and heard so many testimonies of lives that... Uh, fall in love with your truth and start to be drawn to you so early because mom and dad have done such a great job explaining your word. I pray that would be done in this home. May you grant them great joy as they see her grow up and walk in the truth. I pray for a real point of conversion that's clear to the whole family, sometimes hard in a Christian home to kind of figure that all out, but I pray it would be clear to them that you'd give them that point of repentance and faith as a red-letter day on their calendar and that we would see Gigi grow up to be a godly woman, a woman who chooses uh, what is right and what is good to love you and serve you above all other things. Uh, let her bring a great uh, confident assurance just by the fruit that she bears um, that mom and dad would have no doubt uh, that you're blessing her, that your hand of provision is upon her. Uh, that her name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So, God, we pray that for this family. We know 
No family is perfect, and though we pray and we're dressed up here on this stage with lights and microphones, uh, we know there are daily challenges. There's all kinds of things that come up, and uh, there's disobedience, and there's bad attitudes, and there's sicknesses. There's all these things that parents have to navigate. We pray that in this case, it would be navigated so well. God, please just give them the wisdom and the insight through every season of childhood for their daughter in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. So good. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, Jordan, he's got one fan in the back row there. How are you guys? Doing good. good. Introduce these people to us. This is my beautiful wife, Brittany, and my little girl. She'll be three in a couple weeks, Paisley June, and a little boy just turned one rider, Jordan. Very good. What's up, buddy? How are you? You want to see if Pastor Mike can hold you? Is that possible? What do you think is going to happen? What do you think might happen? What's your thing? You're almost as smiley as your sister. Almost. So tell me about these kids. What are they like? She looks like a girly girl to me. She is. She loves to sing and dance. Yeah. She's like her mom. Very. Oh, really? Let's hear more about that. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, what about this guy? All boy, is he? All right. Likes to chew on his finger. Finger, climb over the couch, try to go up the stairs. Very good. Well, tell me about their names. These are, uh, I guess, interesting names. Let's start with Paisley. What, what's the story there? Not, not much of a story. We just picked out two names. And uh, when we went to the hospital, yeah. we narrowed it down to one each. Oh, so you waited to the last minute yeah. to make this we final decision. And uh, she ended up in the, in the NICU. Yeah. Oh. Days. I wasn't to make it. And uh, oh. mom finally got to sleep at 3 in the morning. I went and I said, yeah. what do you like? And I named it different names. And every time I said Paisley June, well, there you go. made a sound. So. Very good. Well, yeah, we had one in the neonatal ICU. We know that's a, that's a traumatic time. That'll really stretch your faith. And we're so glad that she looks like she's doing great. I assume she's she fine. is. She's, yeah. She's thriving. Very good. And this one's doing all right and seems to not mind Pastor Mike too much. Look at these people out there. What, you, what do you think? What do you think? Anyone pick your nose a little bit about that? <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. That happens. It's okay. It's all right. They all pick their nose too. They just, they just don't usually do it in front of you. Although some of them do. Mostly when they're driving. Right? You pull up next to people and it's like, what are you? Well, hey, hey. Knock it off. Your, your windows aren't tinted. That's what we say. All right, buddy. All right. Well, we are glad that you are here as a part of our church, and I just want to ask you formally, if you stand before your church family, they're committing to pray for you. It's good for them to hear that you're committed to raising your kids according to the instruction and admonition of the Lord. Is that your desire? Yes, sir. Terrific. Well, we want to pray to that end. You want to go back to mommy? You want to? Okay. There she is. All right. Well, we want to pray for you now. Pray with me, please. God, we just thank you uh, for Brittany and Jordan and even just hearing about Paisley and knowing that parenting sometimes is filled with uh, things that just draw our hearts into a place of full dependence on you. As we pray and we say, God, please help us. We need it. And I pray that they would depend on you in prayer every day, even when there's not a crisis, even when they're just thinking about how to instruct and how to direct and how to correct all the things that parents have to do. So we commit them to the task of parenting, what an important thing it is, what a privilege it is to be able to direct young lives into the next generation, give them wisdom, and let them, even as they've confessed here, be faithful to that everyday decision to say, we just need to make sure we're instructing our kids right in line with the morality, the ethics, the theology of what you've told us in your word. It's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. May it be a great guide map for their parenting in the months and years to come. We commit them to your care in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, guys. Fantastic. Bye-bye. Yeah, she was going to wave, but then she looked at the microphone. She said, I wanted the microphone. Paisley did. All right, we got the Jordan. Well, who crossed the Jordan? Joshua did. So Joshua's coming out here, and we're going to uh, have Joshua introduce his family to you. We should have had Joshua first and then Jordan. Joshua, I don't know, whatever. I'm, I'm way, way into Bible trivia at this point. Step on up into the light here, guys. There we go. Right. Yeah, introduce your, it is bright, I know. Introduce your family uh, to I'm us. I'm Josh. Uh, this is my beautiful wife, Sarah, and this hey, is Nathaniel, Elijah, just turned 16 months yesterday. 16 months. Let's see if Nathaniel might go to me. Hey, Nathaniel, you think the weird pastor might hold you? Yeah? Come on. Yeah, he says, no problem. 
No problem. This is a good looking boy. Let's wave at those people. Look at him. What do you think? What do you think of those guys? Kind of scary. You should see them when you're preaching a hard passage of scripture to them. They get, they look even meaner. What do you think? You want to wave? Can you wave to them? No? Okay. <laughs> oh, great. So how's it been? This has changed your life. I have a little boy in your family. Yeah. Yeah. He's full of energy and okay. very active and that's that's how boys are. Yeah. Yep. We're learning and growing. Um, Terrific. The Lord is sanctifying us too in the process. But right. He's been good to bless us with this gift. Well, it's fantastic. And we are glad that you're parents. It is a great uh, faith stretching, character building experience. And uh, it's just going to continue. <laughs> Every phase, it's a new challenge. And we want to pray for you. They've written your names down or they're writing them down now. They're committed to pray for you. But I think about uh, Ephesians chapter 6 that, of course, tells kids they should obey their parents, but also tells parents to be careful to follow God's word in instructing our children. So I just want to ask you as you stand before your church family, you're committed to raising your son according to the instructions of God's word. Yes. Fantastic. Well, we want to pray for you right now. They're going to continue to pray, but let's pray right now. We're going to pray for you, buddy. Let's pray. All right. God, thank you so much for a chance for us to see families, their faces, and put their names down on our prayer lists as we think about the next generation and what a need there is for young people who have had a great foundation laid in their lives of good theology about who you are, that you are a creator, that you are perfect in righteousness and holiness, that you're a just God, and that you're not just going to look the other way when it comes to sin and transgression in our society and even in our lives, but kids that understand that you're a loving God, that you loved us so much that you sent your only son to take on the penalty of our sin. And so, God, we just pray that this young life will be at a place one day, early on, would be great where he sees his state before you and cries out to you to become a child of yours. And I pray that would happen with a real definitive measure of fruit that comes in the wake of that decision. And there might be a great foundation built and an aiming of mom and dad to see him be a great productive, not just member of society, but a citizen of the kingdom. So God, we commit him to this. Pray this would be happening as we pray effectually for this and pray mom and dad would have such a, a, a joyful, satisfied heart in seeing this son grow up to make them proud. So God, we just commit them to your care now and to the parenting task in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That is a handsome little boy right there. All right. We're going to have Craig come out because when Joshua crossed the Jordan, he met a guy in Jericho named Craig. <laughs> have, you have you read that? That's in the Mike Fabara's version of the Bible. All right, Craig, introduce your family to us here. Sure. So my lovely wife, McCall, uh, my wow. oldest, uh, our, old, our, our oldest, Evelyn. Yeah. We have Vance and uh, Clay, who uh, just turned six months. Clay, what's happening? He smiled at me, so I just grabbed him. That's right. Stranger danger right here, huh, buddy? Hmm. What you thinking? Wow, look at those eyeballs. Very good. Like mom. Very good. And how have these kids been for you? Awesome, every single day, every hour of every day? You're not supposed to lie at church. <laughs> That's right, don't be, don't be yeah. lying. Yeah. All these people are going to go, well, you'll have a long line of people asking for how you did it. <laughs> All right, buddy, how you doing? You okay? Looking at me, what you think? A microphone? What do you think of that? Go ahead, touch it. Drive the soundboard guy crazy, touch my microphone. <laughs> nah. All right. Well, let's see. The names here. Tell us the story about Clay. Is that a? Uh... Um, so it was uh, McCall's uh, grandfather's, or well, excuse me, that's Larry. Larry. The middle name was the special name, um, McCall's grandfather's um, name, and then Clay. We had a, a lot of trouble coming to an agreement on names. I think and a lot of we're parents talking do. To like yes. the last day um, prior to birth, and there's a whole birthing story of driving 95 up the uh, five freeway to oh, get to the hospital wow. one time. And, and uh, okay, we want yeah. a little bit more on that. So, yeah, I still have PTSD from yeah, that story. You, <laughs> you had your go bag packed and everything, right? Was this? No, what? we didn't. No, I just had like one contraction. Was like, mm, we need to head there. That was it. And then we got there at 9:38, and yeah. he was born at 9:40. Wow. So, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
If ever God is going to approve of speeding, I think that's that's the time right there. Wow. I once told, well, whatever. I got stories, but that, that. He was excited to arrive. Yes, yes. Yes. And we talked a little bit about Larry, the middle name. The spelling is unique, which is over your shoulder there. And this is grandpa's name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What a, what a great uh, testimony to the legacy. And it's great to tell children when they get older, like, here's why we did that. And uh, to learn all about grandpa. Very good. Well, we want to pray for you. This church has been exhorted by their pastor to write your names down, to pray for your family. But as you stand before them, we just want to hear from your own mouth if you're committed to raising your kids according to the instruction of God's word. Yes. Fantastic. Well, let's pray to that end right now. And this one's going to go the distance. So I'm going to pray with him right here in my arms. You ready, Clay? Mm, Are you ready? I'm going to go to mommy. That's a half, that's a half hearted. We'll let him go. All right, Clay, let's pray. God, we thank you so much for growing families. So good to see a family here with three kids and to see Clay join this family. And I pray for them, even for uh, their siblings, that, that for his siblings, that they would just have that kind of harmony in the home as often as possible as people learn to be patient and to bear with one another and to love each other and forgive each other. And just there's so much to this, God, and so much in your word that can be exposited, all based on the truth of what Christ has done for us. Pray for Deuteronomy 6 to be true in this family. They talk often about your word as they get up in the morning, as they sit down for meals, as they walk along the way, as they put their kids to bed. Let the books that they read at night to their kids be uh, just educational about truths that are eternal. And they continually get them ready for life in this very fallen world to live as light and salt. I pray for real conversions for all three of these kids at some point that you have ordained for them. And I pray they reach that and you would have the kind of fruit that is making a difference not only for them and their immediate family, but they might affect many people. They might be, as D.L. Moody said of his granddaughter, may they be great in the kingdom of God. So we pray that, God, for this family. Protect them, guide them, give them great joy along the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Patrick, here they come. All right. How are we doing, guys? Introduce your family to us here. Great. Thank you, Pastor Mike. Uh, My beautiful wife, Nikki, and this is Justin, and that's Brandon, my other son. Hey, Brandon. How you doing? Good. What about your brother? Tell me something about your brother. What do you think of him? Um, um, I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> does, he, does he ever cause you any trouble? Oh, he, he is, he's aware. He knows where he's at. He's thinking, I'm not, I'm not supposed to just lay this stuff out here. You're a good boy. You are a good boy. So, Mom, you tell us about Justin. What kind of, what kind of boy has he been for you? Oh, my goodness. You've been through this. You're a veteran parent. Yeah. Um, he is a sweet boy. He has a really fun personality. He's got a really great sense of humor. And uh, he's just at the age where he's, he's learning so much. He copies everything. And his language is just exploding. So yes. Oh, no, that's really fun. fun. Fun stage. Yeah, it is a fun stage. They start stringing words together and... And he wants to do everything his big Yes, does. that's how it is. You got a good, you got a very important responsibility to be a good example to your brother. Are you ready for that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you want to say anything else? You going to be a good, obedient son for the rest of your childhood? Sure. <laughs> I've laid way too much on the big brother here today. Yeah. Well, we know you're part of our church, you love Christ, but uh, we think about the challenge of raising godly kids in our age. It's not easy. We got the whole culture screaming in the ears of our families, hey, this is the way it is. We look at the Bible, we say, not true. Uh, So we know it takes a lot of grace, and it it does take the the prayers of, of your church family. So I've asked them to pray for the next seven days at least. Those who know you, of course, will pray for a lot more than that. But uh, we want to ask you as you stand before them, are you committed to using God's word as the roadmap for your parenting choices? Yes. yes. Fantastic. Well, we want to support you in that. Our kids' ministry, I hope you've already found, is a great help. Yes. Uh, they're working hard to make sure that we lay a good foundation. But it's all just augmenting your job because it's your job you're the disciplers, and we want to help you in that. And we want to start by praying for you right now. So let's pray. <clears throat> God, thank you so much for this great family, for the way that they love you, love your word. And uh, we know we all fight the battle every day in our own Christian lives just to try and 
uh, arrest and direct our own volition and will and the path that we should go, and then to think about the responsibility of young lives that we uh, have task, been tasked with the responsibility to raise up in uh, the admonition and instruction of God's word. We just know that's a big task and it has lasting effects. And so we pray for mom and dad to take that job seriously, to find themselves often on their knees praying for your help and your wisdom, your insight, that they would definitely try to saturate their home in the truth of God's word, the books they read at night before the kids go to bed, the routines of praying before meals, all the things that help direct kids to know what's most important and to be able to filter out a lot of the rest. So give them grace in this, give them favor, give them success that both these young men would grow up to put their trust in Christ, to see their own need, that they might not only be saved and assured of their salvation, but they might make a difference in many people's lives. We need this next generation to be strong and courageous and bold. And so we pray these boys would be strong in their convictions like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like Daniel, being willing to stand strong in Babylon. So give them the grace and may our church even take seriously their task, as Paul said in 2 Corinthians 1, of helping others by their prayers. And so we want to be selfless in our praying. Even if people in this auditorium right now don't even know this family, I pray that they would pray earnestly because they've come and asked for it, given them success in this. We got to look forward to good things that we hear down the road about how you use these two lives to make a difference in the world for your cause. So we commit them to your care now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Good job. See you later. Man, I put big brother on the spot right there. That was, that was rough, Pastor Mike. How we doing, Jacob? Doing well. How are you? Introduce your family to us. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Jacob. Um, this is my lovely and gracious wife, Abigail. And uh, this is Dinah, and the littlest one is Fern. Very good. And she's thinking, this is loud up here, isn't it? Is it loud? So loud. I know. Fern. Now, we, we know there's a story. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hi, Fern. Here, do you want to go to Pastor Mike? Do you think you could do it? I think you maybe could. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What you think? Nah. Nope. <laughs> nope. It's okay. If I had the choice, I, I, I understand. I get it. I called your name and you responded. Now you're going to smile at me? Don't, don't, don't be a girl. Come on. <laughs> rejection, smile, rejection, smile. No, okay, stop. What eyeballs this one has. Now, Fern, and it's because I know your mom, I know the story, but that's not a name you find in a lot of baby name books. Uh, no, no, not, not. Maybe not much anymore. This is a literary uh, choice, is uh, it another not? Another one, yeah. Okay, tell yeah. us, tell uh, us. Abigail's always loved um, Charlotte's Web, uh, and it, I, I do too. Um, so, yeah, we just pulled it from uh, the main girl from that. Stop. She is such a flirt, this one. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. We can't handle it. We can't handle it. We can't handle this. <clears throat> I know how to pray. Uh, I, know, I know how to pray. I know. You need a little heartbreaker. I know. Yep. I hear you. No, we got it. We know. We know exactly your strategies. You are not the first to employ them. Yes. So, yeah, we got the story there. I wasn't paying attention, but uh, I, I was being manipulated by your daughter. So, I, I am every day. Yes, I know. This is hard. Yes, raising girls, it's a special challenge that God has chosen for you. Definitely. Yes, so, um, yeah, we won't get into that. But we do know that in this world, right, there's a lot of influences that are bombarding your family, but we really think about what God is saying to really have human flourishing take place, and there's so much truth in God's word that has to be a, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. So we just ask you as you stand before your church family, they're committed to pray for you. Are you committed to raising your kids according to the admonition and instruction of God's word? Good. Well, we want to help you in that and supplement that with prayer. So let's pray for you now. God, we are grateful, so grateful for your word. And even as I said, it's a lamp to our feet, light to our path. And as Deuteronomy 6 says, we had better talk about it in our homes. We better talk about it when our kids rise up. We better talk about it as we walk along the way or drive down the road. As we put our kids to sleep, as we sit down for meals. There's just so many opportunities, especially when our kids are young, to talk about things and tie them back to foundational truths, to eternal truths. As Francis Schaeffer used to say, just the idea of these transcendent realities that are bedrock realities. They're not, they're not preferences. They're not flavors and ideas and opinions. 
but the things that you've revealed to us in your word. So I pray for mom and dad, give them wisdom and strength. May their learning in your word continue to be enriched every day that they might be able to impart biblical truths to the next generation. Thanks for these two gals that are growing up in this home. Uh, give them protection and just give them all that we would hope for in, uh, in young lives. As D.L. Moody uh, wired to his daughter about the, the, the birth of his granddaughter, may uh, these gals be great in the kingdom of God. That's what matters. Even if they're not great in the world's eyes, but may they be great in your eyes because we know storing up treasure in heaven has eternal reverberation. So bless this family, God. Protect them. Let them thrive spiritually and in every other way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, man. That was something. Did you see all that go down? That was something else. All right. Daniel, introduce your family to us here. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. My name's Daniel. This is my wife, Dominique, and our first son, Wyatt. Wyatt. How's it going, Wyatt? We're going to get along better, aren't we? <laughs> then Fern. Yeah, Fern was just toying with me. Hey, you want to go to Pastor Mike? What do you think? You think yeah. this might work? <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm used to it. Yes, that's right. Hey, what you think? See, there's no game here. playing here. <laughs> We're just enjoying life. Two buds here. Look at these people out here. What do, you, what do you think of those guys? Look at them. They're nice and smiley now in about 15 minutes. It ain't going to be that way. <laughs> They're going to put their preaching faces on. Look over there. Look. A handsome little boy. So how, this has changed your life a little bit, hasn't it? Have, have a kid. What's that like? You can see my eyes are red. Yes, less, less sleep. <laughs> That's right. Is he, is he learning to sleep through the night and do all that? Getting better. Getting there? Yeah. Yeah, good, good, good. So tell me about his name, Wyatt. Just Wyatt the... in Old English means strong warrior. Hmm. Also Wyatt Earp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was a strong warrior yeah, in yeah. his own right, right? And uh, Melvin was after my uh, grandfather who passed away a couple years ago. Excellent, yeah. yeah. No, that's good. It's good to tell those stories down the road about, uh, about family relatives. And it's just an awesome thing that you have here, an opportunity to uh, invest and instruct and guide <laughs> And you are a good one. Look at, look at this guy. <laughs> look at him. Yeah, what you think? Well, we want to help you as best we can as a church. You know, we invest in playgrounds, and classrooms, and teachers, and curriculum. Try and do what we can to supplement. But we know a lot of the instruction comes down to your daily discussions with this little guy. And I think why it's a super important name, because we need strong young men in this next generation. We don't have them. Yep. Christians are going to fold. So we want to pray for strength. But as you stand before your church family, I've exhorted them to write your names down. They're going to be praying throughout this week fervently for you. I just want to ask you as you stand before them, are you committed to raising this young life according to the instructions of God's word? Well, we want to help you in that. We're going to pray for you right now. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this young life that I'm holding in my arms, for the potential that we always see in young lives. We know he's got his own personality but we have hopes and ambitions and prayers for him. That he'd be a strong young man who would stand strong. Like we've seen in scripture, I think of young Samuel who was willing to speak the truth even when it was hard. I think about his convictions that just helped to shape a generation. I pray you'd have great plans for Wyatt, that you'd help his mom and dad to pray fervently for him every day, to do what they can to instruct him and guide him and lay those foundational truths in his life. Be good to this family, protect them and guide them and let this church be a blessing to them as we rally around them and help them and just befriend them through the process of parenting. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Say bye-bye. 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 What a good-looking boy right Thank there. You so yes. Much. All right, guys. <laughs>